We are live, I think. Ha are we though? Good. Uh -huh. I mean, I sure hope so. <laughs> yeah, I just need to change uh, things on the Twitter. On the Twitch, sorry. Uh, oh my god. Alright. Blanking really hard. Title of your game. What, Crossroads? Yes, thank you. Cross sorry, I was having a That's mini okay. stroke yeah. there. Okay. Done. Okay, perfect. We are live. Okay, thank you very much. Um, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the RPG Internazionale. As always, we have uh, a slew of technical difficulties, but we are a go. But we are a go. Um, so, uh, hi, I'm always, I'm as always the fat man, and we are here with, go ahead, introduce yourself. Yep, hi everyone, I'm Sebastian, Sebastian UA on Twitter, it's good to be here. Awesome, and, uh, they are the developers of Crossroad, a game that, uh, whose review is coming up very soon on our YouTube channel, and who has decided to honor us with a talk, which is going to be a great time, hopefully. Fingers crossed. <laughs> no, it will be, I promise. <laughs> so, um, just like uh, we did last time, I... Um, ooh, we are having some issues on your side with the camera. Your video is coming and going. Oh, my bit. side? Yeah, a bit. It's not a big deal. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know what? I will just okay. I can do the network thing again because where I am, the internet is not that is not that good. Oh, I'm sorry. That sucks. Don't worry. Uh, no, that's okay. No, I kind of I'm in the middle of nowhere, so don't worry about it. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm... how's that? Perfect. Better. Okay. Yeah, better. Excellent, excellent. All right, no problem. Well, thank you very much for everybody for coming and taking a look. And we are going to be following kind of the same format that we did in our previous video. So let's start by just introducing our creator of the week. So let us know a little bit about yourself, how who you are, how you came to RPGs, etc. Just uh, kind of an overview of... Uh, you as a creator. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Um, so I started out in, I would say, 2019 because I ran a one-shot D&D game for this group there. And you hang up on me. Yay. Exploring that ever since, and it's been about a year since that uh, game was. You spoke uh, and you probably said very insightful things, but your camera was completely dead, and I think it's my fault because I opened Discord on another tab to check uh, if there was something going on, and I think I killed everything. So give me a second to fix this. I am okay. so sorry. Yeah, that's fine. How do I bring my camera back? Okay, camera is on. Perfect. Yeah, better. Whew. Oh my god! Yeah, let's get uh, let's uh, get it back from the start. I apologize so much. So, uh, you started talking about uh, having run in the one shot in twenty eighteen, correct? Uh, yeah, thereabouts. So, and I mean, I first ran it, and so yeah, I first ran it then, but then I didn't um, start learning how to write it up properly until 2019 because I took the RPG Writer Workshop uh, in December of that year, and then I just spent uh, just spent a while 
uh, refining it and polishing it up. I also commissioned some artwork for it, so it was a whole process. That's really dope. That uh, who did you get the um, RPG writing workshop from, so that we can like promote in general like good uh, forces oh. in the RPG community. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, so that is run through the Storytelling Collective, and it's very exciting because actually this year the um, this is the seventh cohort that's just wrapping up. They will they're finishing tomorrow, and I actually was able to be one of the instructors for that session. So um, it that's kind of so is a awesome. testament to my progression in one year. So it was it's really cool. That's so awesome. I'm. Uh... I should give it a try, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I would absolutely recommend it. Um, I learned a lot from it, and it's really valuable. Um, everybody who uh, who contributed lessons is really insightful, and it's a really uh, cool way to get to know other people in the in the community, especially other people who are starting out. So I would really recommend it. Awesome. Okay, so um, coming from that experience, obviously, you started developing uh, um, your own game, you developed your crossroads. Uh, why don't you tell us a bit about it? That is the main focus on our, our interview, so it's going to be the big uh, throw line of our discussion here. So why don't you pitch us Crossroads in uh, like two minutes? For sure. So uh, Crossroads is a GMless, no prep, card-based prompt game for one to four players. I like to say that it's a game at the intersection of grief and hope because it provides a framework for players to tell stories that are about loss, but also gives their characters the agency to decide how to move forward from it. Um, I think that allows for some really moving character work and there's a kind of cool map making component uh, if you like doodling and you can play it as a group or you can play it as, uh, on your own as a journaling experience. Uh, it's set at this ethereal extra dimensional space that's known as the crossroads and it's really up to the players what that looks like. That's really, really awesome. Uh, thank you for the description. Um, so let's uh, uh, get uh, digging a bit deeper into that uh, specifically. Why don't you tell me a little bit about uh, uh, how mechanically it works? Because this is the first uh, GM-less uh, game and prepless game that we, are that we have featured on the channel. I am a huge fan of uh, gemless games. I enjoy them a lot. So I'm very curious uh, uh, how you approach them. I mean, I'm not because I've read the book, but I'm sure that the people who eventually watch the video will be how you have approached the mechanics and so on. So why don't you tell us a bit, uh, just kind of an overview of uh, the basic mechanics the, um, from a crun crunch perspective, from a mechanical perspective, how it works. Absolutely. Um, well, the, as you said, the mechanic of the game is there is no uh, GM. Instead, there are four decks of cards. They're, they're split into different themes. There's clouds, forest, void, and stars. And the clouds deck deals with like the present time and the environment that your character finds himself in. Uh, forest is about revisiting an unresolved memory. And void is about getting into how and why that memory is difficult. And stars is about your character's dreams and hopes for the future. And so the idea is that these decks need to be explored in order and players take turns drawing the cards and answering the prompts. And so if I'm the player who draws the card, I answer it. And then I invite the next, pa uh, the next player by name to answer it. And once that play is done, then, then they call on another player to answer it until everyone who wants to has had a turn. Like, the idea behind that is to get people engaged with each other's characters. And it's always nice when someone says, you know, I'd explicitly love to hear your thoughts on this, as opposed to everyone just listening to you, because it's arbitrarily, like, your turn. And I put in the map making piece. Uh, there are a few map making cards in the deck. So... Clouds has three, Forest has two, and Void has one. The distribution of the cards is like that, so you're statistically more t uh, more likely to spend uh, more time in Void than in Clouds, which I based that on feedback that I got during playtesting. I thought that actually initially possibly it would be more impactful to spend more time establishing the setting and spend less time in the Void deck answering heavy questions, but actually players said that they prefer the reverse. And uh, though, of course, players can actually move on to the next deck whenever they feel is right, they all just kind of have to agree to do that. Um, anyway, the map making prompt is a prompt to draw something on the shared map. And one of them is like, you notice a landmark, you should draw the landmark. And another one is like, you hear an, a loud noise that's really overwhelming, so draw that. And it can get pretty abstract. I mean, drawing isn't one of my skills personally, but I really like to doodle and I wanted it to be accessible and not really dependent on your skill as an artist. It's more about the experience of 
drawing and depicting how your character experiences the setting. And so after you've drawn the map prompt card for that deck, so once a, uh, so once a player picks up that card, it's like a signal you do the map and then you move on to the next deck. And it's also possible to instantly get a map prompt card before you answer any questions in the deck. Like that happened during playtesting actually, and I actually like that randomness and it means that each game will be different. Um, there's a final card in the stars deck that's not a question and it's the name the path you take prompt. It invites the character to leave the crossroads and it des and describe how they leave and what that path they take is called. And uh, during playtesting, we had some really cool ideas, like one player left through a wind tunnel and a couple of players left by taking public transit. It really is up to you how that works. And the point is that it's not really, it's very mechanics light because I really want people to have a, like, uh, engage in their characters and have a role-playing experience um, because I'm not really great at mathematics mm -hmm. and I just wanted to to create a game that allowed people to tell stories that they're interested in telling, basically. Cool. That is very, very awesome. Uh, I mean, you say you are not uh, interested in mathematics, but at the same time, you do have uh, some more crunchy projects as well, right? I have looked into some of the other things you have made. So uh, what are the other projects that you are particularly proud of? Uh, I have looked at some, uh, I believe, DMs Guild stuff. Oh yeah, uh, so it's not necessarily that I'm not fond of mathematics, it's that I personally am not very good at it. <laughs> so um, I spent, I don't know, you'll, you wouldn't believe the number of times that I've spent editing my, my own work because there's been mathematical mistakes and stuff in it. So um, it's more it's more that I wanted to do, like I wanted to have the freedom to create something that wasn't in an established system or framework. Um, although, you know, having said that, you're, you know, you're right, I do write a lot for, for Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, and I'm very proud of uh, Lake of Secrets, which is my first D&D um, &D one-shot, it was the first game I ever published, and it was the one that I worked on when I took that workshop that I mentioned earlier. Uh, so that one is set in a fallen kingdom after a war devastated it, and I kind of wanted to subvert the trope of, like, the adventurers going in and preventing a huge catastrophic event from happening because by having the adventure be about picking up the pieces after that event already did happen. Uh, basically, the kingdom, like, lost a war against an army of demons, and the demons occupied the land thereafter. And then one day, everyone kind of wakes up and the demons are gone, and the sovereign of the country won't say how they got rid of the demons. And so, after, and then a short while afterwards, the Sovereign of the Kingdom also goes missing. And so that's where the adventurers come in. It's like, it's their job to find them and yeah. find out what actually happened. And then as they go through the dungeon, they find clues oh. about what happened. Um, and no how spoilers, Sovereign got rid of the demon. because we are going to be running it for the channel. We oh yeah, of course, no spoilers. <laughs> no, no spoilers. That's just a, that's just a kind of uh, summary of the premise. Yeah. But uh, though what I will say is there's seven different endings. So honestly, if all your players want to be evil and want to kill every single NPC they meet, that's an option. Uh, <laughs> not that I would necessarily encourage it, but there is an ending written for that if you really want to. Like, I'll, I'll make you earn your evil alignment. <laughs> I think we'll keep the genocide run for the second playthrough. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I actually don't know anyone that's done that, that's made those choices yet, but it's there. It was something I was thinking about. I mean, hey... Having the freedom of it being an option is really cool. Uh, with that said, oh, we have touched a bit on the mechanics of the game. We have touched a bit on your other projects. So uh, I think in the questions that we discussed about a bit before we chatted, uh, I mentioned about what kind of stories the system is kind of made to facilitate in that what kind of play does it encourage? I mean, there is a lot of like people saying that you can play anything in any system, but it's not true, like depending on what you're playing, depending on the system, or depending on what the game is itself, uh, it changes what stories you can tell. So what kind of stories, uh, I mean, you mentioned grief and hope as a core theme. That's uh, yeah. Can you go a bit more into detail about what your, I guess, ideal Crossroads story would be like? Um, I think my ideal Crossroads story would be that um, you should come into the game having an idea of a loss that your character has experienced. And it doesn't always have to mean like, uh, for example, death or something. It can be um, like the feeling of having lost something, someone or some part of yourself. Or it could be about feeling like the loss of an experience that you missed out on or 
uh, something that you worry that you will now never be able to obtain. And really, it's just a, it should just be a story about like the emotion of grief, and I want that to be as open to the players as possible. Essentially, it's the opportunity to tell a story that's close to your heart that you haven't really been able to tell before. And I, I think that uh, if you're talking, if you're asking me about my ideal story, I mean, I don't explicitly say so in the game, but I do think that the game is inherently queer because. Um, for me, as a queer person writing the game, I think it provides the opportunity to explore various types of sorrow of growing up not being accepted by the people who you cared about or about feeling that something was missing but not really knowing how to articulate that. So, but of course it is a game for anybody and I think that as long as you kind of are motivated by that core emotion, I think that um, it can be a really satisfying experience. Yeah. I mean, as someone who I myself am not out to my parents, for example. So... Uh... Right. I can empathize with that feel that's... Uh, with that said, uh, I am very, very, very interested in this type of storytelling and this type of gaming because of the opportunity it does. Uh, one of the things that I've encountered a lot, uh, uh, especially in the D &D community, and I hate shit-talking 5e, because for as much as I talk shit, I think that 5e is great and did good things for RPGs in general. But uh, uh, I have uh, personally found that in the, I guess, mainstream RPG kind of uh, vibe, all stories are kind of like almost always just a power fantasy with uh, a bit of fa fa fancy hats on top. And I really appreciate a game that is uh, willing and able to go outside of that uh, paradigm. Paradigm. Oh my god, I can't speak English right <laughs> now. No, that's okay. That's okay. What, paradigm? Paradigm. Thank you so much. Yeah. No, that's okay. But, um, yeah, I think I understand what you mean. And to a degree, like, I do understand that, like, there is, um, you know, honestly, like, I as a player, I enjoy power fantasy. Like, when I play D&D a lot and when I'm in combat... I get a lot of um, enjoyment out of being able to be like, hey, I cast this spell and wow, I rolled back damage. I just killed the boss. That's great. Yeah. And I do think there is, yeah, I do think there's room for that, but that's just not necessarily the story that I wanted to tell with this particular game. And, you know, there's a lot of support in 5e if you want to run a power fantasy. And that's also part of the reason why I included so many different endings to Lake of Secrets, because if that's how you have fun in D&D, that's how you have fun in D&D. That's fair. I, w I basically want to enable yeah. whatever kind of experience you, you, you want to have when you're playing. That's kind of what I want to do with my games, all of them. Fair, that makes perfect sense. And I have uh, um, a little bit of a question, because, uh, I mean, all art is political, all art is ultimately a reflection of how we think the world should be, or how what we feel about the world, at least. And RPGs are art. That is something I will always fight for in terms of, like, what... Uh, I want RPGs to be seen as art. Um, I wanted to ask you, and this might be a bit spicy as a question, but how Good, do you I like spicy questions. How do you feel about the scene? Because I have uh, seen a lot of pushback against especially solo and journaling RPGs, but in general against uh, uh, RPGs that go against the grain. I guess it's just because I dredge into the worst parts of the community, but... Uh, I have seen a lot of hostility against uh, non-combat focused RPGs. So I wonder, as a creator and someone who is obviously bringing their perspective to uh, this world, how do you feel about that? How do you feel in general about uh, your design process and how it falls uh, like within the various currents of the RPG community and so on? Yeah, um, actually that's a really interesting question. Because I actually think that the people who are doing the pushing back, I think that if you, I think that it's a case of you can like both simultaneously and multiple things can exist in one space. And I think that what's happening is, uh, like, the, if you're a kind of vanguard of the combat based RPG, then, uh, you know, you might feel threatened by people coming out and just kind of putting themselves out there and doing their own idea. And... I can to a degree understand why that might be threatening, but I don't but I don't think it necessarily has to be. I think that people are just 
um, you know, it's becoming more accessible to different to different people who um, yeah. I don't know, like women and par and uh, people of color um, who have historically not been able to um, get their games out of there, like out there in front of a wider audience. And so I think that to uh, to to like the people who have historically dominated RPGs is is very threatening. And I wish that there was a bit more of uh, more of a welcoming attitude, and instead of saying, "Oh, you're doing this, you're doing this thing, it's different from what I'm doing. You're doing, th you're therefore doing it wrong," it should be, "Oh, wow, you're doing something that's really cool and innovative, and you're doing something that my game doesn't do." So, you know, welcome Don't. to being in tabletop roleplay, right? Yeah. So, I do. Uh, I mean, it's kind of sad, but it's not really something I would consider to be my problem in the sense that people can kind of stay mad about it and that's not actually going to change how i feel about it and it's not going to change how other people feel about it because like the people that because you know at the end of the day it's like if you don't want to play the game that i make then you don't have to like i'm not sitting here like forcing you to play it i mean if you're very happy with combat focused games then there's a lot of those um I, yeah i don't really understand lovely. yeah <laughs> yeah right so i don't really understand why this has to be an issue I mean, yeah. of course, I understand why it's an issue, but I don't. I don't. I just don't think it has to be an issue. I just don't really have the time and energy to to spend my own personal life kind of dunking on things that I don't like. I'm just going to hit mute and keep scrolling. <laughs> Very much so. Yes. I mean, being me looking like the exemplary, the representation of a grognard, I have been able to blend into the community very effectively. But my god, when I started playing RPGs, there was rampant homophobia and biphobia in the community, and I was just, oh... It's... Yeah, mm. and I mean, this this still is to a, you know, this still very much is, but I think that, like, what's happened is, um, uh, people who don't want to put up with that anymore, they, they're they kind of going off and finding their own communities, yeah. and that's chill. Like, we are you know, finally getting to more. speak up. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Yeah. That's dope. Uh, awesome. Um, so, uh, obviously, uh, we have now mentioned it a couple of times, uh, um, al alternative perspective. I hate the term alternative perspective as if, like, me is the standard, but and it right. shouldn't be. But, like, uh, non-mainstream, uh, uh, like non I guess, perspective uh, brings up the subject of inclusivity. And uh, mm, the inclusivity... Yeah. Inherent in the RPG community, I mean, for many of us, at least for me growing up, it was very much, RPGs were very much a safe space. Like, I'm, uh, I was able to curate my groups very well, and I was lucky because this skin tone, but uh, I, um, I was able to cure, like, I was, uh, I found RPGs to be very much a safe space. So, I am curious what steps are you as a creator taking in order to make sure uh, that your RPGs, that your product, that your design is a safe space for the future generation of uh, gamers and designers. And I am just curious about how you feel about that. Uh, yeah, I think that um, that's also an interesting question because that seems to... Are you asking about, like safe space in terms of like safety tools uh, or do you safety, mean not only safety tools but in general um language utilized in the system um i have seen uh, games uh, take precautions for example offering up the i've seen recently a game that offered the time of the turns like real time being an issue pushing for the option to switch to world account being how turns are regulated for people with like uh, um, uh, non uh, for non neurotypical people and uh, things of the sort like that all that right. sort of things all that sort of realm of uh, just pushing the inclusion uh, the inclusivity and the safety of our players first I mean uh, I hate to keep bringing it up but Far Verona I don't know if you were there for the drama when that happened. Uh, uh, big name RPG creator uh, torpedoes his own career because uh, he did uh, something real fucked up on stream. Basically, I'm going to leave it at that. I don't. Yeah. Want... No, I do. No, I do recall that incident. I, I, um, I do and I not think, want to yeah. touch it with a ten foot pole, but that is what comes to mind because he yeah. was a big proponent of safety tools, for example, like. 
So that makes me curious if uh, uh, we as a community should move beyond safety tools or like uh, farther than that, what else uh, is uh, on uh, what uh, what you as a creator are focusing on, that sort of thing. I'm sorry if it's yeah. coming out accusatory, by the way. I'm really no, sorry. No, no, absolutely not. But, I think it makes I think it makes a lot of sense to ask this question. And um, from a design perspective, it's really interesting because um, I wrote in the text of the game that safety tools are mandatory for Crossroads. And um, they're actually something that's very important to me. And I've done some work with the TTRPG safety toolkit that you might have heard of. Uh, have you heard of it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so it's a really incredible we, resource. Yeah. yeah. Go we ahead. We use it for our campaign. Uh, we use it for our campaign. I want to say we use it for our campaign, but our most recent campaign, we actually, I actually failed to implement it on session zero because I'm a terrible DM, but also because I've been playing for, with these people for years, so we are a bit more on like the same page. Right, right. Yeah, but um, I've done some work with them, and uh, I transcribed their panels and other interviews that they've done about safety tools because accessibility is also something that's important to me. Um, but I wrote in the games text that safety tools are mandatory, and I recommended which ones to use, and I put a link into the t uh, safety toolkit. And I think it's especially important with, um, with, with RPGs when you can end up wading into subject matter that you know you haven't necessarily discussed beforehand and you don't know what people's limits are and conversely you don't actually know what things that people are actually interested in exploring in because i don't want to kind of go into it assuming that nobody wants you know in crossroads for example that it that is a game that can involve like things like death and other and other such things i don't want to assume that nobody wants to talk about it i mean i, I have to assume that people are here because they want to explore some kind of uh, deeper issue but you kind of can't really play that game in, in a way that respects everybody else um if you don't have safety tools. Yes, absolutely. And yeah. So I think that integrating them into the design and rule set of the game itself is is something that you can do because I, I know that like one of the pitfalls that people can fall into is they just kind of send people a link to the safety toolkit and then they're like, okay, cool. And now my table is safe. And it's like, that's not necessarily how it works. So <laughs> yeah. I am very much guilty of having done that myself, especially yeah. when I was starting using them. Yeah, and that's totally okay. It's a it's a learning process, right? It's just um, it's a kind of it's just it just kind of formalizes things and and uh, creates a framework for you to have those discussions. And I understand that like if you haven't come across them before, that um, that would that wouldn't be necessarily something you would know how to do right away. So that's yeah. okay. But I think that like really mainly it like the important thing is that you're sitting down to play with people who respect you and who you also respect. And if everybody is kind of on the same page regarding like the kind of culture of care they want to create at the table, I think that I think that that's a really good place to start. That is awesome and I love your take on it. Um well, uh, we had touched on a whole bunch of uh, subjects in general talking about uh, uh, Crossroads. Uh, so I would like also to hear something about your uh, history developing. Like, I, well, I mean, we know that we, you have just told us that it's a result of your collaboration with uh, um, uh, the institution i was about to say the group that uh, you now work with uh, so uh, how did it develop what was the, the development story for crossroads in terms of like uh, did it go through many rounds of play testing was there any like big roadblock that you encounter any like big stumbling thing or was it very smooth and just kind of went through yeah, so um, if you're talking about the development of Crossroads, um, I actually, I something that I developed through an, um, through a program called the Tabletop Mentorship Project, and I went into it um, saying that this is the kind of game I want to make. I didn't have anything beyond like a vague idea in my head, and I was hoping that through this mentorship, I would be able to actually um, produce the game. And so, as you can see, that's happened, and I'm very pleased with it. But uh, in terms awesome. of... Thank you. And uh, as far as playtesting is concerned, um, I was able to do three different sessions that I just kind of was listening in on. And uh, that was a kind of a sort of informal collaboration with Utopia, which you might have heard about. It's a that's another um, actual play streaming channel. Um, it's for I, queer people of color. I have not, but I will check them out. That's awesome. Yeah, definitely. And if you're looking for more games uh, by independent creators, they put they um, created like a whole list, um, a collection on itch. So yeah, they're, they're Utopia TV on Twitter. That's dope. And, it's yeah, because, really something I should be doing as well. 
Yeah, and I found them because the person who mentors me, um, their name is Jess. They, uh, they're also involved with organizing Utopia, and so they sent me an invite to the server, and I was like, oh my god, this is actually so great. And so I was able to reach out to folks in that server to do playtesting with me. And in terms of roadblocks, actually, like the, like the one mechanic that we do have is turn order. And I originally wanted to have this thing whereby if you you draw the card, then you ask someone else to um, to answer it, and then you do that, and then the person who who originally answered the the prompt draws the next card. And that became very complicated because people would kind of would go around and be like, wait, so you drew the card, but I don't, but you don't answer it. And it became difficult to remember who did what and who was going to draw the next card. And so I got a lot of feedback about that tone order mechanic being kind of confusing. And I could see that it didn't really achieve what I wanted it to achieve. So I just simplified it and said, you know, that's okay. I, I want to make this playable. So I, but I'd say apart from that, um, that and the and the way that the map prompt cards were distributed those are the two main changes that i got out of playtesting and that was a really invaluable experience like every time i've been a i've uh been able to playtest my games um with other people i've always learned the most from that that's uh awesome that is very awesome uh just to respond to the one person who poked in in chat well i mean my partner has also poked in in chat but uh, oh said hey everyone i yeah said savage who is a fan of the channel since uh, basically when we started just poked in in chat i just need to respond to you uh, i'm really sorry that your computer is uh, struggling that badly to run uh, uh, project zomboid which is on potato graphics uh, with that said this is the rpg live the project zomboid live is in about an hour i'm really sorry mate i need to go back to the interview yeah he was asking a question about uh, Oh, okay, things. well, uh, I hope you get that fixed up soon. Uh, completely unrelated. I'm really, really sorry. No, that's uh, okay. I think it's important to respond to people in, in yeah. chat. That's been a whole other dynamic that I've experienced through actual play. There's people saying things in chat. No, it's it's chill. Hi. Glad to have you. I thrive with chat because without them, I feel a little empty and alone. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Uh, yeah. With that said, um, I honestly think that this is the point where I cut you loose and let you talk about something that you would like uh, to hear, to talk about, or to hear about in the RPG community. Is there anything that you want to promote, anything that you want to shill, any project that is coming up for you or friends of yours, uh, anything that we can link or anything like that? Oh my gosh, there are like so many... Um, I mean, but what I will say in terms of Crossroads is that I'm currently itch funding it. And it's kind of an alternative to Kickstarter because Itch has set up this system where you can set a funding target and sales of the game count towards that target. And mine for Crossroads is set to $250 because it covers compensation for the playtesters as well as for yeah. myself for how much I've already put into the game. And so I've marked it down. I uh, I released it on Creator's Day to, to on uh, Itch Creator Day to kind of tie into that um, for marketing purposes. But I uh, it's currently marked down and it's uh, six dollars ninety six. Uh, instead of being 9.95 and that is a sale that's lasting through until October 31st so if you want the game at its sale price then now is a good time to do that and uh, whenever you get it it will contribute to my goal of $250 so I would really appreciate it and also if you also don't have any money at all or whatever or for whatever reason you don't have room in your budget to buy it then I do have community copies available and that's also supported by people buying the game so uh, there are still some left last time I checked so if you can't, but you're interested in checking it out, then I would encourage you to pick up a community copy, especially if you are at all marginalized within the TTRPG space. Yeah, because that's something that I really believe in. Um, even with my first D&D adventure, that's something that I believe in. So, yeah, you should be able to, to access it. Awesome sauce. I am just literally right now trying to find the links to spam them in chat so that if somebody sees them in the future or right now and wants to put some money down they can yeah thank you and uh, honestly i can send you i can send you a list of all of the links if you want to put them in the youtube description or something oh yes absolutely that would help so much I yeah for sure i can do that to spam this right here that is the link to the itch please go fund uh, it's great to see other projects and see the concept of RPGs expanding, the um, borders of our community getting wider. It's a good thing. 
and I... Oh, I'm sorry, I have a personal crusade against gatekeepers in the RPG community because more people are... Uh, for the same reason that I have... Um, that I have a, I have strong feelings about uh, uh, all the people who t keep saying that video games are art, but then get really mad the moment that you start critiquing the way you would art. Uh, I really want uh, RPGs to be art, and I want people to treat them and critique them and look at them as if they are art, and not just as if they are uh the end D D clone the where we are going to uh, play a burglary simulator at best or a colonialism simulator at worst right <laughs> I, uh, i'm sorry i'm mad salty about a couple of um uh, D, D releases recently um i really like the um uh ravenloft in spite of having two of the worst settings i have seen in years the theme park China feel of one of the setting of Ravenloft was horrendous. Oh, okay, I'm not actually that familiar mm. with it. I've played through the introductory adventure for Curse of Strahd, but it's not a module that I own and it's not okay. something I'm especially familiar with, so I can't really speak to it. Um, but I do know that they released a, um, like the revamped edition. I think they did that last year, didn't they? Yeah, you can yeah. Uh, travel between the various realms uh, and one of them is uh, based uh, on uh, uh, Chinese vampire tradition. I mean, they're not really vampire, it's a different creature, but like the the one that jump and have the card in front of their face, I don't really know the correct cultural term for those, but th those guys. Right. Yeah, and, I didn't know that. Yeah, and uh, it's real bad. <laughs> that one is real bad. I, I'm sorry, I'm... I am completely deviating from what we were talking about. Yeah, and that's okay. And um, I think that if it's not something you would enjoy, then you know you can you can always play other games. That's chill. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, with that said, is there anything else that we want to touch upon before we wrap the interview? Uh, let me check through my notes. Uh, I mean. Um, <laughs> we, touched, we touched on uh, inclusivity and safety tool. You have gone in depth on the mechanics. Um, yeah, we have touched on your other projects. I think we have pretty much covered our basis. Uh, is there anything else that I, I was? Um, is there anything else that you would like to uh, touch on in terms of? Uh, is is it okay? Okay, yeah, sorry. Your camera was having a second. Or... Oh, okay. Um, yeah, sorry about that. Is uh, there anything else you would like to personally touch on uh, since you have, uh, uh, even if minuscule, I am, you have my platform, which is like five people, but you still have it. So is there anything you would like to touch upon with that platform? Anything you'd like to bring up? Anything you think I failed to bring up about... Uh, our your system or our conversation in general please go ahead this is uh, your soapbox moment oh thank you uh well i suppose that um i mean your your whole platform is about um creating an inclusive like inclusive space for tabletop right that's what would you say that that's uh, that's the dream that's what i strive to do if i'm ever uh, capable of it <laughs> i i don't know if i will be capable of it but that's what i try to do yeah that's okay but I think that um, in terms of that, if you're not really sure where to start, there's um, I would recommend you go checking out like Utopia's collection of uh, of indie games on itch. If you're looking for things to play that aren't necessarily um, that that are a bit different from your typical combat heavy RPG, I would recommend going there um, and just kind of supporting people. I mean, I I kind of get the impression that we're all like passing around the same twenty dollars, and that it feels a lot <laughs> like that. For yeah, I, it feels um... a lot that way. I desperately tried to inject some money into the community, but uh, uh, I am very much not wealthy enough to make this my full-time job, much less so oh, to yeah. support the community in any meaningful way, unfortunately. Yeah, uh, yeah, most of us <laughs> most of us aren't, but that's why a lot of us have community copies, because we all kind of have that understanding that uh, yeah. that's just kind of how it is for now, but I'm really hoping that that changes if... 
if, as you say, people start to consider these like a legitimate, serious kind of art form and people will um, treat it seriously, I'd hope so. I mean, I do feel like it's getting better, but it might be because it's getting better for me specifically. And so I'm under the illusion that the community as a whole is improving. I don't know. For, like, my experience has been getting better lately. I Both yeah. financially and in terms of uh, inclusivity and so on. But that just might be a random chance that is happening to me. Like, yeah, or, you know, I mean... privileged. <laughs> no, I mean, I know what you mean. I think that um, it's difficult for me personally to speak to the community at large because it's way too big. But I think that it's got it's improved in the sense that I found people that I can have meaningful connections with. And I think that that is an improvement. So yeah. I think it's just a matter of finding your own like community within that one, if that yeah. makes sense. Absolutely. Also, there is to be said that uh, the international RPG community is very different from the English language RPG community. There oh, yeah. is a wealth of RPG. Uh, Southeast Asian RPGs are booming right mm. now, and so yes. are a lot of European RPGs, Spain and Italy especially. So, like, we might stagnate here in America a bit and be passing around the same 20 bucks to each other, but, like, do, around the world, things are getting better. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, definitely. I've seen some really great things coming out of RPGC, and... Uh... There and I, I also happen to know that um, for some reason, if you if you try like there's a big D and D market in Portuguese in the Portuguese language. It's like the second most um, most in demand one after English, which I didn't know previously. I had no idea that was a thing, but that's awesome. Yeah, it it is a thing. It's because I it was something that I did research into when I was considering translating mm. uh, my adventure into French because that's like the only other language that I would know well enough to do a translation of. And I was looking at some of the market research data, and I was like, uh, actually, this would not necessarily be profitable but it could be a fun project so yeah i started fair, it fair, just fair. because but i don't know if i'll finish it yeah <laughs> we'll see uh pure curiosity because you have mentioned that french is uh, the other language you know um are you canadian Cause... No, uh, well, yes, but yes and no. Uh, I was one. I was just waiting for this question to come up. So I'm actually British. Uh, oh, I don't know okay. if you can hear it in my in my accent. I mean, but, a, yeah, bi I'm actually a bit, British. but I'm shit at accent in English because I'm an immigrant. So like, right. my accent is all over the fucking place. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I'm actually British. I lived there for 18 years before I moved to Canada, and I live in Canada now. So that's exciting. Oh, okay. Dope. Awesome. Yeah, I'm uh, living in Vancouver myself uh immigrant from italy so mm. um, yeah uh anyway yeah uh this uh, was a lot of fun i wonder if we have uh, anyone in chat that wants to ask any questions but otherwise i am pretty much satisfied with what i asked you and i'm very glad that you came over okay excellent thank you and uh I'm happy to wait a second or two just to see if there are any questions that come in yeah. from chat, but because uh, honestly, I love questions from chat. It's very fun. Yeah, I um, honestly the only reason why I'm I'm I stream is to talk to random people in chat. That is the most enjoyable part of streaming. Yeah, it's true. It's true. It's nice that there's people there who are who will be watching your stuff. But um, thank you very much for having me on and. Uh, I hope that this helps you to grow your channel, and I really thank you for your for your time and attention because it's been great. It's been really good to chat to you. I think you've asked some very insightful questions, and I think you're thinking along the right lines. So, um, and also you've had also like I was looking for like like looking through your previous videos when uh can like when looking to learn more about the channel, and so you've had some really cool people on. So that's a credit to you too. Thanks. I am trying to have as many people as I can that have like made cool progress process blah, products and are making uh, our community better as I can. Momatos was an amazing catch. She's awesome. Yes. Uh, yeah. There's. Yeah. I, I saw that video. So that was excellent. So well done. Yeah. No. I mean, she is. Uh probably this year and i am so, well i mean i have not played your game yet so i can't say yet but up to this point she is both my favorite indie creator and uh, uh probably my favorite creator period with uh, uh like with what i've played this year so right yeah i mean i'm turning this is a commercial for my matters but i mean <laughs> go give her money 
That's yeah, absolutely. Agreed. Agreed. And uh, she was actually very generous in uh, providing a bunch of her games for, for free for people who were bundling their games for, yeah. uh, for Itch Creator Day. And I'm sure you talked about that. I was yeah. supposed to do a special for Itch Creator Day where I would review or uh, play through one of the five games that were in a bundle together for Itch Creator Day. But that fell through because, uh, honestly because I had more immigration bullshit and that sent me in a spiral and I was, uh, it took me a few days to decide that I wanted to live with real people again. That <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's fair. I understand that like a lot of the problems that uh, the reviewers run into are like time to play the game and people to play the game with and then there's all the, you have to write up your thoughts. So yeah, I understand. It's, it's quite an undertaking. Yeah, uh, honestly, I thought the reviewing RPG system was easier because I saw a lot of very talented people who have much more talent and probably much more money for production than me do it. And it turns out that it's real fucking hard and real fucking expensive. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. It's becoming like the barrier to entry is becoming increasingly high. And like people who I have seen most consistently able to put out reviews, um, like a lot of the time they'll read the RPG, but they won't necessarily have time to play it, which are yeah. two different things. So. It, yeah, it, it's a bit different, and it just depends on what method works for you. Yeah, a lot of um, a lot of the reviewer nowadays have uh, quite a bit of bank in terms of both skills and funds compared to like me. Like, I would have probably been good enough uh, on like 2015 YouTube. Nowadays, it's really rough because like someone who looks and presents a scuffed as I do is can't compete with actual proper production and shit. <laughs> right yeah it can get quite expensive to like to buy the right equipment and stuff but um you know it's i i think that it's something that you acquire um yeah i've I'm... like this this microphone i've only recently been able to get so we'll we'll, we'll work our way up it'll be fine it's a nice mic <laughs> thank you anyway yeah i'm uh, pleased with it i have not seen new um people asking questions in chat and as such i think that this is a good point to call it for the night Okay, sounds good. Uh, uh, sad uh, or Savage? I never remember which one you prefer because your name is Sad Savage. Anyway, come back in like 20 minutes. We are going to be run Well, yeah, 20, 30 minutes. We are going to be running Project Zomboid. <laughs> Sorry, I need to bring back my loyal watcher. <laughs> yes. Anyway, um, thank you so much for our chat. I think I am going to uh, call it right now. Uh, okay, thank it you. It was a pleasure having you over. Excellent. Anytime. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. Awesome. And yeah, if uh, you have anything else that it's releasing soon, let me know. I'll gladly buy a copy and write a review about it. Oh, thank you. I definitely will. Uh, I will be. I'll be able to send that to you. I'll make, yeah, don't worry, I, I'll keep you posted. I'm working on a couple of other things, but they should be out later in the year, kind of September, October time. But awesome. I don't know if you want to necessarily get spammed with all my releases. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I live for it. Worst case scenario, I don't have the time or the brain power and I don't touch them. But, like, I lose nothing from having them sent to me. And okay. I, yeah. In which case, I will, at yeah. least I'll give you some posted. money. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> anyway. Thank you so much, have a wonderful day, and as always, RPG Internazionale, out, hasta la victoria, compañeros, adios.